My name is Sergio Wittenberger, I'm an RPA developer, and today I'm going to showcase the invoice post processing feature of the DU process template. We had a lot of clients come to us and ask us, how are you certain that the extraction that you have performed is correct? And how can we validate that extraction? The answer is simple. We have to develop some business rules based on your specific use case and some generic rules that we have come to the aid of all our clients, which is the invoice post processing class, which you can find under framework, usable workflows, invoice post processing. This workflow is also present in process each document in our main workflow under extraction rules check. As you know, this is a step that happens after the extraction where we check the business rules. So we simply open the workflow and here we can see the logic behind it. In case the configuration or orchestrator flag always validate manually is set to false, we will do a check to see if we have a semi-structured document financial invoice. If that's the case, then we'll go to invoice post processing, which is the step I just mentioned. In this overview video, we will skip most of the workflow and what it does, and I will just go briefly over what happens on a high level. Keep in mind that most configurations that I'm going to talk about can be done in data config, it has the invoice post processing tab where you can make sure that all the validations that you require are correct. The first step is to make sure that in case any of the mandatory validations that were done previously, if they have failed, that we don't do all the other checks and we send this invoice to action center or validation station. If none of the above checks have failed, we come to the subtotal check. Before the subtotal, and that's the initial thing that we have to do, is compute each line amount. That computation is done by simply multiplying the quantity with the unit price, and we have the line amount. We check that line amount that we have computed with the extracted line amount. If that is correct, then it means that the extraction has been done correctly for quantity, unit price, and for that specific line amount. The next step would be to do this for all the line amounts, and each time we see that the line amount has been computed correctly, we take the extracted sum and we add it to a subtotal. And that's how we get to this subtotal, or net amount. We have the sum of all the line amounts, and we compare it to the extracted net amount. If those two are equal, it means that the net amount has been extracted correctly and we can proceed. We then go to the total extraction. The total amount is the sum of the net amount or the subtotal plus all the fields that can add tax, tariffs, discounts, shipping and handling, stuff like this. As I mentioned previously, all the configurations can be done in the config file. If you have other fields that you will want for your specific use case to add or remove, you can do that there. We add all these fields to the total amount and we compare this computed total with the extracted value of the total. If those two fields are equal, it means the math has been successful and the extraction has been successful for all the fields in the table region. Because we don't have business rules for all the items that we want extracted, for those that we don't, we have to use a confidence threshold. We have specific confidences for fields that we consider are really important and other fields, which group all fields in a general confidence threshold. Depending on how you want to use those uh, settings, you are able to choose between those two. In case anything fails here, we will get in the log message 
the exact confidence and which field failed. And obviously, if anything fails, it goes to Action Center. And if everything has passed through all the checks, it will go to the downstream process, the performance. Thank you for watching, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye.